Good evening and welcome to Kini News. Former Felda Chairperson Mohammad Isa Samad was found guilty of nine counts of corruption linked to the purchase of a hotel in Sarawak. The Kuala Lumpur High Court has sentenced former Felda Chairperson Mohammad Isa Abdul Samad to six years jail and fined him 15.45 million ringgit over nine counts of corruption linked to a purchase of a hotel in Sarawak. He was sentenced to six years jail on each count of the charges, however the sentences will be served concurrently. The court ruled that the defense failed to raise reasonable doubt in the prosecution's case against the accused. However, Judge Mohammad Nazlan Mohammad Ghazali allowed the defense's application for stay of execution on the jail and fine pending disposal of his appeal to the Court of Appeal. The court had fixed today for the decision at the end of defense of Isa's corruption case linked to the purchase of the Merdeka Palace Hotel and Suites by Felda Investment Corporation Sindirian Burhad. On June 16th last year, the court ordered Isa to enter his defense to the nine corruption charges following its finding that the prosecution succeeded in establishing a prima facie case against the accused. Isa was charged with nine counts of dishonestly receiving gratification for himself in cash totaling 3 million and 90,000 ringgit from Ikwan Zaidal, who is a board member of Gagasan Abadi Properties through his former special officer Muhammad Zahid Muhammad Arif. This was purportedly as gratification for helping approve the purchase of the hotel by FICSB for 160 million ringgit. The nine charges were framed under Section 16A Subsection A of the MACC Act 2009 and are punishable under Section 24 Subsection 1 of the same law. It provides a jail term not exceeding 20 years and a fine of at least five times the bribe amount or 10,000 ringgit, whichever is higher upon conviction. Now let's move on to the latest COVID-19 situation in the country in this segment brought to you by Blue Air. The Health Ministry reported 4,284 new COVID-19 cases today. Six of the cases were imported. There were also 3,804 recoveries, which brings the total active cases in the country to 48,309. From the local cases, Selangor recorded the highest number of new infections with 1,572 new cases. This was followed by Johor with 964 new cases, Kuala Lumpur with 651, and Sabah with 190. 307 patients are in intensive care with 141 requiring ventilator support. 18 new deaths were also recorded today, which brings the cumulative death toll to 809. The Malaysian United Democratic Alliance Muda and Bersatu Splinter Perjuang have been trying to get their establishments registered since they formed last year. However, they seem to have hit a snag in the process. Now, if you like the content we produce, please check the link in the description below and make a little contribution to us so that we here in Kitty TV can bring you more quality content. Pajuang and Muda, which have been seeking the registration of their parties with the Registrar of Societies, both had their applications rejected on the 6th of January. According to Home Minister Hamza Zainuddin, this was because both societies were not fully compliant with the provisions under the Societies Act 1996. Hamza said the Registrar of Societies had, upon verifying documents submitted in both applications, found discrepancies with the requirements under Schedule 1 of the Act. The appeal window is open within 30 days of the decision where an appeal can be submitted to the Home Minister. Hamza confirmed receiving a formal appeal after a meeting between Pejuang's Pro Tem Committee and the ROS on the 8th of January. The Muda Pro Tem Committee, on the other hand, has chosen to challenge the ROS decision in court. According to a copy of Muda co-founder Said Sadiq's affidavit in support of the application, the decision to refuse registration is allegedly unconstitutional as it violated the applicant's fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression as well as the right to form associations. Meanwhile, Pajuang Pro Tem Deputy President Marzuki Yahya says he expects a favorable reply from Hamza after considering the party's appeal letter. Meanwhile, PKR President Anwar Ibrahim responded to Hamza Zainuddin's remarks yesterday that the opposition leader will be probed for allegedly inciting the people and threatening the security and peace of the country. Dia kata saya dan beberapa orang lain akan disiasat kerana menghasut dan mendesak, mendesak menghasut rakyat dan mendesak yang bertuan agung Pak Menteri baca kenyataan kita dan surat kita kepada Kebah Duli Yang Mahmulia Paduka Baginda Yang Bertuan Agung apa yang kita sebut merayu, memohon ehsan dan kebijaksanaan tak faham bahasa ke 
memohon, merayu itu meminta ihsan, kebijaksanaan tuanku menimbang. Apakah itu bunyi desakan? Apakah rakyat biasa? Jangan fikir ke saya sebagai ketua pembangkak. Rakyat, tukang cuci, barisan hadapan, pekerja biasa tak boleh merayu kepada yang bertuan agung meminta supaya mempengaruhi keadaan memperbaiki keadaan hal-hal yang kita tidak setuju apakah tanggungjawab rakyat mesti sokong semua tindakan kerajaan yang kita bantah itu keputusan Perdana Menteri dan Jemaah Menteri itu pertama yang kedua harus diingat bahawa yang bersetuju itu 114 orang tetap dan mungkin sampai 115 maknanya majoriti ahli parlimen yang membuktikan perikatan nasional hilang majoriti sebab itu parlimen digantung sebab kalau diadakan parlimen yang menentang atau minta dikaji semula darurat dan terutamanya penggantungan parlimen itu ha, itu isu ya, yang yang berkaitan iaitu penggantungan parlimen itu majoriti jadi sepatutnya menteri teliti hal ini tak payah ugut kita ugut undang-undang apa saya nak tanya undang-undang apa dalam negara kita peraturan pelambagaan mana yang tidak membolehkan rakyat memohon esan Kebijaksanaan dari Tuan Agung dalam apa-apa perkara pun. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said that he would do all that he could as AMNO president to raise issues on behalf of the people, but he cannot guarantee that it will be heard. AMNO president and Barisan National Chairperson Ahmad Zaid Hamidi has apologized to the people if the issues he raised on their behalf has fallen on deaf ears. In a Facebook post yesterday evening, he said he was the AMNO president and BN chairperson, but he did not hold the reins of administration in the country. Hence, he could not make any decisions on behalf of the government. He said all he could do in such a limited capacity is to speak up, and he would continue to do so for the sake of the people. He added that he could only apologize if the issues he raised are not entertained by the authorities. Zahid said he had read all the Rakyat's comments on the cost of living and he pledged to further voice their concerns. While noting that several BN parliamentarians have been appointed as cabinet ministers, he said they have no absolute power. He said he had spoken out during the debate of Budget 2021 and many times before and thought that he could continue to do so in Parliament, but the Parliament sitting is not allowed now. An emergency has been in place since the 12th of January and will last until the 1st of August on top of the renewed movement control order to contain the COVID-19 outbreak which had worsened since November of last year. No parliamentary sitting can take place throughout the emergency. And that's all we have for Kini News this evening. For more stories, go to kinitv.com. We also post the latest news to our social media on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. So do follow us there to get the latest updates as well. Don't forget your mask when you're going out. And if you can, stay at home. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching. And as always, stay safe, Malaysia.